so recruiting was fun. I'm taking visits to, to colleges and I'm, they're treating me nice and I'm like, okay, I'm taking my, my family with, on these visits and everybody's saying kind of the same thing. So every visit she went to, she'll call. When I already knew, the coaches would call, what does she like? So, you know, they fix everything up. And she'll go, coach, I'm going here. This is where I'm going. I narrowed it down, my top five was Rutgers, DePaul, crazy. Um, Syracuse, St. John's, and West Virginia. So I, I took a lot of my visits, but for me, it was about being close to home. It's so crazy because like, I had such a great relationship with Doug Bruno, and he's like, Chicago is just like a quick flight away. Like, your family can come, and like, Keisha Hampton was there. She was from Philly, and that was like somebody I really looked up to. Like, it was like, big time role model, like, um, great player, and we're from the same place. So. I wanted to do, I wanted to make that move. Doug Bruno was calling my grandma, like, he had her like, you might be able to do this. Like, we might be able to come. Like, he's saying that you'll be able to, we'll be able to fly out. And I'm like, that would just be too much. And I think that it really kind of came down to Rutgers or DePaul. The thing that separated Rutgers from everybody else was I think they kept it so real. Uh, I think Coach Stringer, she didn't let me come on my visit and just be relaxed. Like I was, I was chilling. I was letting everybody telling me I was the best thing since sliced bread. But now she kept it so real. And like, what's so crazy is on my visit, she took my scholarship. She got there, she had the worst attitude. Cause she didn't want to go and she was like, yeah, whatever. Didn't want to socialize with anybody, with no one. <coughs> Told Coach Stringer, I don't want to go here. Who does that? I ran out the room crying. Her mom ran out the room crying. And Coach Stringer was like, it's okay. We have this cake for you. We still gonna celebrate. Wherever you go, good luck to you. And she kept it so real. She like, I can go get another you. And that was so true. And it was just so crazy because I was like, I was full of so many emotions. And she was just like, you know, we can finish the visit and like, I could take my scholarship back. And I was like, I was crying. I was like, like, can I get my scholarship back? Like I, like I committed on my visit and I was just like, like I'm coming to Rutgers. And I think that that was the best decision for me uh, with my family situation, me wanting to be close to home, me wanting my family to see the games. And then um, me just playing for uh, a black woman who was just legendary and who create pros. And, and Rutgers was for me the, the place that put the WNBA in my, in my mind. First possession of the game for Rutgers. Rifled inside and all alone for the bucket. That's Kalia Coppa, the freshman from Philadelphia. When I got to Rutgers, I just knew that so many great players were there. And one of the very first things Coach Stringer said was, you're going to be a pro. Um, you're going to get an education and you're going to be a pro. And kind of didn't realize, like, what she was saying and then I'm like, we had this, this saying in the locker room, we honor those that came before us and you see Cappy Pondexter, Mati, Epiphany, like you see all of these great players. I'm like, they were in this exact seat that I'm in right now and they learn from the best, they learn from Coach Stringer. So I think that once I got there, uh, I started to believe and it was something that I really wanted to do. It was, it was a legacy. It was just a legacy there that I wanted to uphold. So any game that we could make, even on um, like the weekdays, we would ride out there. Because uh, when my great grandma was living, we would pick her up and take her. She always wanted to go to the games. So um, we would go to any one of her home games that we could. And even like when they pay, play close to home, like in Penn State, we would ride out there as well. I think my mom being diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, like kind of like, shook my world up like you know life life would come at you quick so it was important for me for however anything ever played out in my life for my family to be able to see me do what I love to do and uh, continue to grow uh, not for it to be hard for them to get there and for me to feel like I had that support. Draft night was crazy when I got the call just about being invited to the draft it was like wow like it, it's really here but I tried to remain calm because I know like some people get invited to the draft and then they still go like third round. So I'm like, you know, like I'm gonna still be calm, but 
I was just grateful. I'm excited and I'm like nervous at the same time. We're beginning something excited. new right it now. Great. And we're starting with this 20th season, so <laughs> it just makes it so much more exciting. We were sitting at the table on the floor, so it was um, my mom, myself, and my great grandmother. And we didn't know what her number was going to be. We kind of speculated because of what she was saying, but uh, yeah, it was it was surreal. Uh, and it was a no-brainer for me. It was my mom, my grandma, my sister, and Coach Stringer. And I think that without those people at the table, I wouldn't I would have never been where I am. And I I wish I had another seat for my coach Sabrina Allen, um, but she was there. I had a, a real moment with my family, like my mom, my sister, and my grandma and Coach Stringer. I think that they was, it's like they planted like these seeds and like that was the moment where they was able to see the seed really like bloom. Uh, Clara Clark, Talia Copper's great grandmother. And um, this has been her dream from way back. And uh, I'm glad to see it happen. She is too. <laughs> get picked in this league is just an awesome opportunity. But um, if I had to choose uh, somewhere close to home, maybe New York, uh, DC. You know when your name's about to get called because the camera comes around. So every time, like you knew, like the number one pick happened when they called uh, Brianna Stewart, the camera went around. So when they were like getting ready for like the seventh pick, and the camera started moving, I was like. Oh my goodness, it's me. Like, I'm the seventh pick. And then I was like, this is Washington. Like, this is perfect. With the seventh pick in the 2016 WNBA draft, the Washington Mystics select Kalia Copper from Rutgers University. Getting drafted to Washington was like the perfect situation. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to be here, first of all, to be invited to be one of the 12 players. And, um, just to hear my name called, it was it was an exci it was so exciting. I don't I don't really have any wor words right now because it hasn't really hit me yet. But um, I'm just so excited for this next chapter of my life. I've had women in my life that had dealt with lots of adversity, uh, and it had it never stopped them. You know, Coach Stringer has a story. Uh, my mom has a story. My sister has a story. My my grandma has a story. So. I think that that's one thing that they've all instilled in me is like adversity, it doesn't stop anything. And like life doesn't stop for anything also. So whatever it is that you want, uh, you gotta work, you definitely gotta work hard for it. You know, it sounds very cliche, like you work hard, you get the results, but it's really like what it is. Well, I, I just don't think that it's done here. I think that she's gonna uh, be one of these people that, that is going to be celebrated as one of the all time greats. And I, I really believe that in my heart. She's amazing. She has good taste. She has all the good snacks. She has all the good snacks. And her house looks nice. And everything she do is water. And I like I like her basketball moves. I like how she like dribbles and makes her own like. It's like it's like hard. It's like hard. But she makes her own like moves for when she plays basketball, and she like she gets her team to win. Aria, what's this pose that Aria got going on? Okay. Oh, one more, one more, one more. Tifa, get it on my phone. It's phone raggedy. Oh, Sunny, come here, come here, man. Come here, come here, my man. That's my Sunny. Come here, come here, come here. Like, we ain't leaving my son out. What y'all think this is? Sunny, say cheese. Call Sunny, y'all. <laughs>